We want to continue understanding today in our continuing study of the difference between being religious and being spiritual to see what the Bible says about dead works as opposed to good works and evil works. We saw in our last study that there was a difference between the works of the flesh, evil things that are so obvious that even our conscience tells us about them, and dead works which could be good works but works that spring from a corrupt source. And we considered two of them in our last study. Works, for example, that are done reluctantly, grudgingly, without joy. Or works done not out of love for God. Now we want to continue looking at some other works which may look good on the outside, but which are dead in God's eyes. Works done without zeal. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 to 19, we read the Lord speaking to the elder of the church in Laodicea and saying, You are lukewarm. You are neither hot nor cold. You are not on fire. You are half-hearted. And he says, I wish you were either cold or hot. Now in the world there is a saying that something is better than nothing. But the Lord apparently doesn't believe that. He says, I wish you were cold, dead, or on fire. But this half-hearted type of Christianity, he says, I'm not interested in. And he says, finally, in verse 19, therefore, be zealous. Half-hearted works are dead works. The Old Testament commandment which Jesus quoted in Mark 12, verse 30, said, we are to love the Lord our God. And it doesn't just stop there. We must love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and all our strength. He said that's the first commandment. In other words, our whole being must be taken up with love for God. For example, when you worship the Lord. There's a lot of difference between wholehearted worship and half-hearted worship. When you praise the Lord, you can say hallelujah. And the other person can say hallelujah. But there can be a lot of difference between the two. One, it springs from the depth of his heart. He's really thankful to God and he praises the Lord with all his heart. But you've gone through the ritual. You've said the right thing. It's not a sin to say hallelujah. But it's a dead work as far as you're concerned. It doesn't come from the depth of your heart. It's lifeless. Our worship and our praise must be wholehearted. For example, when we pray. You listen to some people praying and you go to sleep. I mean, they're not saying anything sinful in their prayer, but the whole thing is dead. You know what a dead prayer meeting is. What's a dead prayer meeting? Did people pray for sinful things there? No. They prayed for good things, but they were lifeless. Works, prayer, praise, activity, done without any zeal, is a dead work. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 11, in one translation, it puts it like this, that we must be aglow with the Spirit, on fire in the Spirit. Fervent in Spirit means on fire in the Spirit at all times. There was a law in the Old Testament in Leviticus 6 and verse 13, that the fire must burn on the altar perpetually. It must never die out. Paul told Timothy, fan to a flame. That gift that is in you. There was a danger of it dying out. It's not a question of just exercising them in a half-hearted way. We are to fan to a flame even the gifts of the Spirit that God gives us. Just because some other people abuse them doesn't mean that we should ignore them and throw them in the waste paper basket. No. Let's exercise them in a proper way. A lot of Christian churches today are not probably living in gross sin. But they are lifeless, lacking the burning fire of the Holy Spirit. They are not cold, but they are not hot either. And the Lord told that whole church in Laodicea, Because you are lukewarm, I will just spit you out of, your mouth, out of my mouth. You see how dead works can lead to a lifeless type of Christianity, which finally the Lord rejects. We need to repent of works 
done without zeal. And then fourthly, dead works are works done without faith. In the Old Testament, there is no such phrase called the obedience of faith. It was only obedience. You obey. For the Lord says you obey. But when you come to the New Testament, you see in the first paragraph in Romans chapter 1, and in the last paragraph, in the end of Romans, in Romans 16, this phrase repeated, the obedience of faith. James says that faith without works is dead. I would also say, works without faith are also dead. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Supposing you do a good work, and it's not in faith, it's a dead work. Supposing, for example, you pray for half an hour, and you pray for a lot of powerful things, and you don't believe that God is going to do one of those things, what's the use of that type of prayer? What's the use of a one-hour prayer meeting where you don't believe one single thing that God is going to do for you? Isn't that a dead work? You can have an all-night prayer meeting, which is a dead work, because... People don't believe. Praying without faith is a dead work. In fact, one minute of prayer with faith is far more acceptable to God than an all-night prayer meeting, which is just a ritual without faith. Works done without faith are dead works. Now, I'm not against long prayers. Jesus prayed all night. And there may be times when we need to do that. But Jesus praying all night was not a dead work. He prayed in faith. Faith also means personal conviction. Romans 14 and verse 22 it says, The faith which you have, have as your own conviction before God. We must have a personal conviction about the truths of Scripture. The faith that you have, it says here, let it be your own conviction before God. When you do something merely to imitate what somebody else is doing, or merely because some man of God teaches it without personal conviction. It's a dead work. Maybe it's a good work, and maybe that great man of God teaches that particular doctrine and tells you to do it in some way and you imitate him. It's not going to bring you life. Imitation always brings death. Imitating another person. Let me give you one example of it. In Hebrews 11, verse 29, we read that the Israelites by faith crossed the Red Sea. And then it says, the Egyptians imitated them. And what happened? They drowned. What did imitation bring to the Egyptians? Death. Now the Israelites went through by faith. The Egyptians didn't have faith. They just imitated what the Israelites did. And it was a dead work. And that's been written for our warning. You may see another brother doing something in faith. A ministry, for example. He does in faith. And you imitate that. What's it going to be? A dead work. God never called you to do that. So, we're not to em imitate another man's ministry or the emphasis that another man has in his ministry. The Bible says, prophesy according to the proportion of your faith. Romans 12.6 God doesn't want us to be imitators, you know, like parrots just repeating what somebody else says. He wants us to have personal conviction. And what you do without personal conviction is a dead work, even if it's a good work. God has no value for it because it doesn't come out of your personal relationship with God. Let me say this for your encouragement. God does not want you to be like somebody else. He wants you to be yourself. He made you to be yourself with a particular personality and a particular background and upbringing, just be thankful and do what you can. And that will be far more acceptable to God than if you try to imitate somebody else. Then let me tell you a fifth thing. A fifth way in which we can do dead works is when we do works, which may be good works, Christian works, but which are done for personal gain or honor. The Lord told the leader of the church in Sardis, you have a name that you are alive. Sometimes we can do Christian work to get a name that we are alive. And we can build up a reputation 
and to continue that reputation, we keep on doing certain things. And it looks very spiritual in the eyes of others, but God sees that underlying everything is your motive. You want to get a name that you're alive. And what's the result? All your works are dead works. Anything that we do to impress another man is a dead work. A living work is that which is done to impress God. Living works are done in secret before God's face alone. Where your left hand does not know what your right hand has done. Where you keep it hidden. You pray and you don't let anybody know that you pray. You fast and you don't let anybody know that you're fasting. Those are living works. But dead works are works done to impress people. And you don't conceal it from the eyes of men. And we could say that those are works which we later on meditate on and glory over. I want you to notice this expression in Acts of the Apostles in chapter 7 and verse 41. There Stephen was speaking about the Israelites in the wilderness and he uses an expression saying, Acts 7, 41, that they worshipped the work of their own hands. Do you know what that means? To do something and then to look at your work and say, boy, that was something good I've done. You remember how Nebuchadnezzar walked on the roof of the palace in Babylon. We read in Daniel 4 and verse 30. And he said, Boy, this is a tremendous kingdom that I have built. A huge palace with its hanging gardens. And what must people be thinking about it? Do you know, my friend, that when you serve the Lord and you do some work, maybe God has used you in building a great ministry for the Lord, and then you look out over it, and like Nebuchadnezzar, you say, it's tremendous what I've done, and you're thinking about the opinion that others have about your work. It's a dead work. You've got to take all those thoughts, throw it in the garbage bin. It's Babylon. What Nebuchadnezzar built was Babylon, and what you're building is Babylon too. Our righteous acts in human eyes are an abomination, fit to be flushed out into the sewage system in the sight of God. All that is great in God's eye, in man's eyes is an abomination to God, it says in Luke 16, verse 15. You know, if you're not going to be radical in eliminating dead works from your life, you'll never be a spiritual man. If you do God's work, for example, for a salary, it's a dead work. God may give you money to take care of your needs, but if you serve the Lord only because you're paid, what's that? You can call it Christian work, but it's not really serving God. You're serving God and money. May God help us to have our eyes open so that we are free from dead works.